Hi, and welcome to Projects 360, a uh, full demonstration of our um, SaaS program for the custom integration industry. We do everything from managing your sales opportunities to generating the proposals to all your project management, time tracking, scheduling, work orders, service work orders. We have a full inventory management system where you can actually allocate product to specific projects. And then for accounting, we integrate with QuickBooks, both online and desktop. And we integrate for database management with Portal.io. So today, what I'm going to do is go through a full demonstration all the way from the sales process all the way through completion. So you can kind of see the workflow of Projects 360. That being said, we're going to get started here. So right now, I'm on our sales CRM dashboard. And on that dashboard, you can see what's in your overall pipeline, what's been added in the last 30 days, what's been won or lost in the last 30 days or year to date. You can see each individual salesperson's pipeline and that's clickable to go into. When a new lead comes in, you'll go over to clients and you go to the menu over here and go to add client. Here's where you'll fill in all the client information, either first and last name or company. You can also have a site address and a billing address. You can assign your salesperson. Also, you can set up different sources in the settings so you can track where your business is coming from. You can also create different statuses, different tags. You can also create custom fields. So if there's an additional information that you want your team to gather, um, you can create those in the settings. Once you're done, you'll hit save. That'll save that client to your local data table here. If you ha um, We have a nice search feature up in the corner here where you can search by name, by company, by phone number, by email. Um, it'll then pull up the client. You can click on the client and this will open what we call the client profile page. Here you'll see all the information that you entered, including those custom fields. You can add opportunities to a client and they'll be listed down here with the open opportunity value up here. During the sales process, salespeople can create activities for themselves. Activities can be anything. It could be to do a follow-up call, to set an appointment. They can give those activities due dates. And then on that due date, they'll get an automated email called the daily rundown, which is basically a list of their agenda for that day. So things don't fall through the cracks. We have a notes section where they can add notes. And when you do add notes, it does stamp the author and the date and time that note was added. Over time, you'll be able to see any associated records with this client. So any projects, any proposals, any work orders, any invoices, and all of these are clickable to go into. And we'll cover each one of these areas in detail throughout this demonstration today. When you click on an opportunity, it'll open it. And in the opportunity, you can see what the estimated value of the opportunity is, what your expected close date is, how long that opportunity has been aging, all the information about the opportunity. During the sales process, salespeople can upload any documents they gather um, to the opportunity. So, you know, scopes of work, floor plans, whatever. But now let's say you've met with the client and you're ready to generate a proposal. Right from the opportunity here, you'll go to add proposal. That'll then um, pull all the information over into our proposal tool here. Um, you can create templated scopes of work and select which one best applies. Same thing with contracts. Also in our proposals, you can create what we call pricing, what are pricing rules. What a pricing rule is, it can be a lot of different things. It might be how you give a discount to a client. It might be how you calculate miscellaneous parts. Basically, it's a percentage, positive or negative. So let's just take this miscellaneous parts at 4%. I can select that, and then I can determine how that 4% is calculated, either from the labor total, equipment total, or from both. And then when I save it, it creates that pricing rule here in the proposal. And you can have as many pricing rules on a proposal as you wish. 
Also, you can select your different tax rates that you set up. In the settings, you can create payment schedules. And how our payment schedules work, they're a percentage of the total, and you can actually progress invoice off of those once it's approved. After that, you're going to go to the section called Locations right here. And if you go to the menu right here, you can go Select Locations. And in the settings, you can set up all the locations that you use on a regular basis. And you can sit here and drag over to the right the locations that you want inside this proposal. And you can even drag and drop the order you want them to appear on the proposal. And um, if you have a specific one-offs that maybe you don't want to add to your database, you can just go back here and just add single locations. Same thing with the systems. What systems are, they're a filter. You can create whatever systems you want, like audio, video, televisions, uh, co uh, control systems, whatever you want. And again, you can just drag into the, the proposal what you want for this particular proposal. And I'll show you kind of how that filter works in a little bit. After you're done doing all the setup, you're going to go to the menu here and you're going to go to Proposal Builder. And now we can add product a variety of different ways to this proposal. The first option is, in our, in our system, you can create a local product database here under Products. And then from the proposal, you can search that product database. So let's say I'm looking for a Sony XR television. I can just type that in. It'll bring everything back that's related to that search. I can then click on the location I want to put it in so I can expand it, and then I can grab it and drag and drop it to the system, which in this case would be televisions. You can add accessories to a product during the in the settings. Um, so like this television, for instance, has two different types of wall mounts associated to it. It has a fixed mount and an arm mount. To remind the salesperson, hey, you need some kind of mount. Which one do you want? Well, let's say for this example, I just want a fixed mount. I can then turn off the arm so it doesn't add it and hit add. And now it added the television and the fixed mount to the proposal for me. Also, when you're setting everything up, you're going to create all your different labor phases like pre-wire, trim, final. And you're going to put your hourly rate to those. And then you can assign a labor phase and how many hours it takes to install. So when the salesperson drags the product into the proposal, it brings the correct labor phase and labor hours in with it. Another way you can bring product in is if you go to the menu right here and go to Portal Search, we have an integration with Portal. And Portal is a company in our industry that manages our database. So let's say I'm looking for a Crestron and I know it's a DM RMC, but that's all I know. I can just type that in to the search. It'll reach out to Portal's database, bring back everything that's related to that search. I can select the product, and then it'll bring in the product image, the manufacturer, the model, the description, and your pricing um, that you have set up with them. And you can go add to queue. And it'll list it over here in the queue. And you can sit here and add as many items into the queue as you want. And then once you bring it into the system, you can bring it into the proposal itself. But you can also save it to your local database right here under products. And it maintains that connection to portal. So if Crestron does a pricing update, it'll you can go to your product database right here and select all your Crestron product and go sync to portal, and it'll update all the pricing for your Crestron for you so you don't manually have to do that. And then you can also create packages in our system. So let's say you have your favorite surround sound system or conference room that you do a lot of. You can build it just one time, and then you can bring packages into the proposal. So under the family room, under audio video, I drag this 5.1 surround system. And if I expand that, I can see all the product that I built in that. So, I mean, I just literally dragged it over and it brought all the product that I wanted for that surround system into the proposal. So a nice, quick um, way to build proposals. 
Another little shortcut feature we have is called cloning. So let's say I need the Sonance VX64Rs in multiple locations throughout this proposal. I can click on it. I can go up to clone right here. I can select the system I want to clone it to. So let's say it's audio video. And then I can select all the locations that I want to clone it to and hit clone. And then it clones it to all those locations. And you can clone entire proposals also. But now let's say we're done building the proposal and we want to generate the proposal for the customer. I can go up to the menu here and go to generate proposal. I can filter the proposal by category, by location, by manufacturer, or by system. We also have a bunch of advanced options, like do I want to show product images? Do I want to show line item pricing? You could sit here and play with these different settings and save it as a template, um, the, your favorite way you want the proposal to look. Over here are those systems that we talked about earlier. Like I mentioned, it's a filter. So let's say I wanted to generate a proposal for the customer this time, only showing them items under control system. I can turn off audio, video, and televisions, or any kind of combination of those. Over here, you can create your own color scheme to match your company brand. You can upload as many cover images as you'd like, and you can select the one that best applies. And then you can either download a PDF of this, or we have an email feature that you can uh, generate an email link in your email. And when the client clicks on that link, it'll pull up the proposal um, for, you, for them. It'll have the color scheme and everything that you selected. Um, it'll also show how you broke it out. So we have the color scheme, the client information, the cover image you selected. This would be um, your company logo and information. Here's the scope of work we selected. And in this case, we broke everything out by location with product images and line item pricing. I broke labor out by phase here. Remember that pricing rule for miscellaneous parts that we created? Well, here it is, and it did all the math. Here's the total. Here's the payment schedule I selected, and it did all the math. And then here's the contract I selected. And then there's an electronic signature box here for your customers that they can do an electronic signature, hit approved. It'll send you a notification, but then also inside the proposal here, when we go to revisions, we can see the date and time that was approved. So now that that proposal was approved, we can actually create a project. So if I go back to the menu here, right inside the proposal, I can go to add project. It'll ask me to select my, who my project manager is going to be, and they'll get notified that a new project was created for them. It'll also ask me to push the proposal over along with all the labor phases and labor hours. And it creates what we call a project details page, which is basically going to be the dashboard for the life of this project. And let me walk you through all this. So first off, think of a project more as a location than a client. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a client here. But if you looked at a flow chart of how our industry works, <clears throat> you have the client on top, and then underneath the client, they could have multiple uh, projects going on. It might be a homeowner with multiple homes. It might be a business with multiple locations. And that's exactly how we design the software. Over here, um, when we go to the menu and go to project products, your project managers and technicians can see any proposals or change orders related to this project. And then they can click on this to pull up the proposal and it pulls the entire proposal up um, for them, except for pricing. And then they can filter the proposal by location, by phase, by brand, by model number, or by system. And then also from here, your project managers are usually the people that know when things need to be ordered or allocated. 
as this project moves along. So right from here, <clears throat> they can highlight any product they need to have ordered or allocated. And then they can go to the menu right here and go to add to product request. It'll update the status to requested so they know they requested it. And then in our inventory system, there's a product request page that sorts everything by project that needs to be ordered or allocated for your purchasing and inventory department. And we'll show you, I'll show that to you in a little bit. If we go back to that project details page here though, I'm gonna walk you through all this. This has all the information about this location of this project. So first off, you have your time tracking. So when you push that proposal over, it also pushed all the labor phases and labor hours into our time tracking module. So you can track time against what was budgeted versus actual. And you can see instantly if a phase is going over budget here because it'll turn red like this. And it's clickable to go into so you can see the details of why that's maybe going over budget. Over here, you can see all the work orders ever created for the life of this project. And then you can filter your work orders by the two types we have. The two types are we have project work orders, which are the work orders created during the build of the project. And then we have service work orders, which are the service calls after the fact. At any time, you could click on this arrow right here to open up any previous work orders that you've done in the past to see what work was done. And we'll come back and go through work orders in detail in a couple minutes. Let's finish going through all the information here on this project details page. Another feature we have are called custom checklists. So we allow you to create any kind of checklist for any kind of process you might have. Like you could have a pre-wire checklist, a trim checklist, a final checklist. When you click on a checklist, it'll open it. You can see what's been completed and what hasn't been. And when people check items off, it does stamp who checked it off and when for accountability. And then also it updates the percentage of completion of that checklist. Over here is a great internal collaboration tool called Discussions. So we allow you to create a discussion about this project with your team from the project. To do that, just go to the menu right here and go Add Discussion. And then you can give the discussion a title. You can start the discussion. You can select who from the team needs to partake in that discussion. They'll all get a notification with the link to discussion. When you click on that link, it opens the discussion and you can reply to it and it creates a nice threaded conversation that lives in the project for your records. Over here is where you can create one-off tasks. So the majority of the tasks for the technicians and everything are going to be done inside of work orders that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes. But there's always a need to create a one-off task. An example of a one-off task might be to create a task for the office manager to invoice for that deposit. When you create a task in our system, you'll give it a title, you'll describe it, you'll assign it, you'll give it a due date, they'll get a notification that a new task was created for them, but then also in our notification system, you can get notified anytime the status changes of one of your tasks. Over here is our cloud storage. So you can upload any documents that are related to this project. So floor plans and engineering, pre-wire photos, system programs, whatever you want, you can create as many folders as you'd like. And then any documents related to this project live right in the project for your records. Over here, you can see any invoices ever created for the life of this project. Over here, as this project ages and goes into service mode, if, you, if any product needs to go in for repair, you can create a service repair ticket for it. And now you got a log of all the product that's ever gone in for repair for the life of this project. Over here, we're tied to Google Maps, so you can see where the project is. You can see any open purchase orders related to the project. We have a note, general notes section that you can add notes. And then another cool feature we have is if you go back to the menu here and go to custom forms, 
we allow you to create any kind of form that you want. Like you could have a network form that houses all the client's network information. You can see their SSID and their different passwords, all their different access points. If the clients have some special services and the logins you want to have for your service team, you can put them in there. You could create a system design form that you can see what's in the different COM ports and relays on the processor, how your video and audio distributions laid out. Whatever you'd like, you can create as many forms and as many checklists as you wish, and then you'll select which ones you want to apply to each project as you create it. Going into work orders, we created a nice work order dashboard for your project managers to make their life a little easier. So from this one location, they can create a work order for any project and any employee. And then they can filter them by the project or service work orders or by the different statuses work orders have. When you go inside of a work order, you can see what type it is. Is it a project or service? You can give a work order a title. You can put hours to a work order because we got a clock in button right here for the technicians. When the technicians hit the clock in button, it already knows the project and the work order they're on. All they got to do is grab the phase they're working on and hit start time. And now they're tracking time against the project, the work order, and the phase, and they have a live running clock here. If this was scheduled, you could see who's scheduled and for when right here. And I'll get into scheduling in a couple minutes here. But what we need to do first is we need to add the tasks of what we need the technicians to do. And we have a variety of options for that. If we go right here and go to the menu and go to add line item, the first option is if there's a proposal involved, you can pull the proposal up in front of you by location. You can then check the box next to the items you want to bring into this work order. And then you can go save. And it'll bring not only the product into the work order, but actually the location of where it needs to be installed so the technicians know where to install it. Another option is, remember those custom checklists you could build? You could bring one of those in from your library. If this was a service call and you just need to type in what they need to do, just go to general item and you can just type in what they need to do. If you're using our inventory system, you can associate an inventory transfer to a work order or bring things in from the various warehouses you created. So lots of different options there. Also in our work orders, you can add notes by line item. So if there's some special instructions that you need to relay to the technicians, or if the technicians were having an issue in the field, they can add a note and it shows that there's a note to that line item. And if they were having an issue, they could even take a photo of what's going on because we allow attachments by line item and it'll show that there's an attachment there. The technicians can check things off as they complete it so you know what's completed and what isn't. And just like the other checklists, it'll stamp who checked it off and when for accountability. If this was a service work order and something needed to go in for repair, you can create a service repair ticket right from the work order here. Just go to the menu, go to add repair item. You can put in the RMA number, the tracking number, the date that you're shipping it out. And then you could set a reminder for one of these time frames that if you don't get it back, it'll send you a notification to follow up with that manufacturer so things don't fall through the cracks. To clock out of the work order, just simply hit the clock out button and hit stop time and that'll clock you out. Also on our work orders, we have an you can get electronic signatures so the technicians can get sign off that the work was completed. And then if this was a service work order and you wanted to create an invoice for that service call, just go here and go add invoice and it'll push all the information from the proposal to the invoice tool. Um, and then you can create the invoice and sync it to QuickBooks to receive payment just like you normally do. Going into scheduling, um, over here, you can see a list of all your employees and you can click on any one of them to see what their utilization is for the week. Also, off to the left here, 
you can see all your unscheduled service and all your unscheduled project work orders so they don't fall through the cracks. You can view the calendar by month, by week, by day, or by list. And then also, if you go to the menu here, we have some filters. Like if you just want to see your service calendar, just click on service and you can see your service calendar. If you just want to see your production calendar, just click on that and it'll just show that. To schedule one of these unscheduled work orders, just grab it, drag and drop it to the day and time you want it to start. You can color code items. You can schedule individuals. Or if you guys like to work in teams, you can set up teams in the settings. When you're done, just hit save. That'll load that event into the calendar. If you do need to edit it, you can drag and drop it longer, drag and drop it to different days, and it automatically updates. And then if you go back to the menu here and go to filter by, we have some more advanced filtering where you can filter by specific employees, specific projects, and specific dates also. Going into time tracking. So we talked about time tracking against a work order, but as you know, we don't always have a work order. So we have this enter time section where you can just grab the project you're working on and the phase you're working on and hit start time. And now you're tracking time against that project and phase. We have this currently clocked in view where you can see a list of all your employees that are currently clocked in, the project they're clocked into, the phase, the date and time they clocked in, a live running clock, we do do a GPS stamp of where they clock in and where they clock out. And if you do need to clock them out, you can clock them out from here also. For inventory, as you probably noticed throughout this demonstration, we allow you to create as many warehouses as you'd like. So in my example here, I got a main warehouse and then each vehicle has a warehouse. When I click and go inside of a warehouse, It'll produce a live dashboard for me. It'll show me the total number of product in that warehouse. It'll show me what's in warning or low stock mode that need to be reordered. It'll show me the cost and retail value. It'll show me the last time I performed a cycle count. It'll show me any incoming or outgoing transfer. Also, you can see all your open purchase orders right here, and you can filter them by the different statuses they have. But remember earlier when that project manager was requesting product that needed to be ordered or allocated? Well, here's where it went. It's called our product request page. And like I mentioned earlier, it sorts everything by project. It lets your purchasing and inventory department know what was requested, what if any of that product you have on hand, how many were requested, if it's been sent to the PO queue to get ordered yet, if it has been ordered yet, and then if it's been allocated and what's still needed. So like in the case of the Sony television, I have two on hand and only one was requested. So nothing needs to be ordered. I just need to allocate one of these two to this particular project. And I do that by clicking on the product, going to allocation. Because this is a serial tracked product, it breaks both my serial numbers out. I can select whichever one I want to allocate and allocate it. And now it updated that Sony television reduced the on hand from two to one. And now it's telling you you got one of one and put a little green check mark here saying you got what you need. If we didn't have it like this Sony receiver, we got a few options. If we um, highlight it and then go to the menu here, the first option is add to the PO queue. And what our PO queue is, is basically a big depository of all the product that needs a purchase order created for, for it. So you can create one big Sony purchase order so you can get your free shipping. You could just create a purchase order right from here for it, or you can add it to an existing purchase order. So lots of different options there. So a few weeks before this project's due to go out, you're going to want to see all green check marks here saying you got everything. Then when it's ready to go out, you're going to go to fulfill request, which is basically creating a transfer to the vehicle warehouse that's going to take it out.
the technician that's in charge of that vehicle warehouse will see an incoming transfer. They'll click on it. It'll populate all this product along with quantities and serial numbers for them. They'll verify that's what they have. And then when they accept the transfer, it moves it from the main warehouse to their vehicle warehouse. Um, so now they're in charge of it. And then if you recall in our work orders, you can associate an inventory transfer to a work order. If you did that, all this product, along with the locations it needs to be installed, will populate inside the work order. So when they check it off that they installed it, it delivers it to the customer. And then we have all kinds of reporting in the system. We have a custom report builder where you can build custom charts, go to the chart, select which chart you wanna you know, do. You can apply your filters and then you can hit draw and it draws the chart for you and then you can save that to your favorites so you don't have to redo it all the time. And that's a 30,000 foot view of the platform if you'd like more information or to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, just email Doug, D-O-U-G, at projects, P-R-O-J-X, 360.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.